Hi everyone! Today we're going to look at the effect of pH and partial pressures of oxygen on hemoglobin's ability to bind oxygen. We'll be using a vacuum system, a manometer, and a spectrophotometer. Start by turning on your spectrophotometer and letting it warm up. This is what the screen looks like when you first turn it on. If you don't let the spectrophotometer warm up properly, you'll get an error message when you try to use it. This is what the screen looks like when it's warmed up. Press the ATC button to change to percent transmittance and press the nanometer up and down buttons to set the wavelength to 625 nanometers. Label a series of test tubes for the vacuum pressures you'll be testing and one tube for the blank. For the blank, you'll be using a buffer pH at the same pH that was used to produce your hemolysate. For this demonstration, we'll use a buffer pH at 7.4. Transfer 2.5 milliliters of buffer into the blank tube. Wipe any fingerprints off the blank tube and place it in the spectrophotometer. Press the 0 ABS 100% transmittance button to blank your spectrophotometer. Once you've blanked it, you don't have to do it again. Transfer 2.5 milliliters of the hemolysate to the 0 millimeter mercury tube and let it warm up before you place it in the spectrophotometer. This will help prevent any condensation that could collect on the outside of the tube, which could interfere with your readings. When the zero tube is warmed up, wipe it off and place it in the spectrophotometer and take your reading. Place 2.5 milliliters of hemolysate in the sidearm tube that's attached to the vacuum system. Place the rubber stopper in the top of the tube to seal the system. Turn on the manometer using the power button. It should be set to millimeters of mercury. If it is not, you can use the unit button to cycle through the various units available until millimeters of mercury is indicated. To zero the manometer, press the hold button for a couple of seconds, then release it. Now slowly open the vacuum and increase it to 300 millimeters of mercury. You want to do this slowly and carefully because it's very easy to overshoot your target vacuum pressure. Once you reach your target vacuum pressure, nudge the valve back slightly so that it stops increasing. Set your timer for 5 minutes. Pick up the sidearm tube, tilt it, and begin shaking it at a steady rate. You want to expose as much of the hemolysate to the vacuum as possible. You also want to be careful not to get the hemolysate in the vacuum tubing. After 5 minutes, turn off the vacuum and transfer the hemolysate to the 300 mm mercury tube. Do this quickly and try not to get any air bubbles. Wipe off the tube, place it in the spectrophotometer, and record your reading.
Now we'll jump ahead to the 700 mm mercury tube, just to show you what happens to the hemolysate under high vacuum pressures. Transfer 2.5 milliliters of the hemolysate to the sidearm tube. Repeat the procedure, except this time, set the vacuum pressure to 700 mm mercury. After 5 minutes, turn off the vacuum and transfer your hemolysate to the 700 mm mercury tube. Wipe off your tube and place it in the spectrophotometer and take your reading. Here you can see the difference between the 300 and 700 mm mercury tube. Once you've finished all the vacuum pressures, your tubes should look something like this. You can see that the hemolysate gets darker as it becomes more deoxygenated under higher vacuum pressures.